So, before I start this topic, we are going to consider two basic ground rules. First one being, we will never rely on one, one single tool to perform reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. So, we will look at all the possible, not all, I mean, some of the possible um, OSIN tools and perform a reconnaissance um, when you are doing an intelligence gathering. And the second rule being, um, we will always get in. Doesn't matter how far the network is, what's the actual value of the race, we will get in. So considering those two points are smart map presentation, zero to zero, target ground fields over the internet. So sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. So who am I? Um, I've got over seven years of experience in the field of information security and management. I'm really passionate in uh, I've got a key interest in offensive as well as defensive cyber security. I'm um, currently working as a principal security uh, principal consultant at Jack Intelligence Private Limited in Australia. Uh, in my free time, I have lots of tools and manage a number of tools on my data profile. It's, you can find the link below. Um, in the month of August, I presented at Atlantic USA on the topic of uh, how you can have um, uh, how you can have a uh, high trusted domains uh, as a C2 channel and extract data out from the sensitive networks. Uh, outside from Infosec Land, I like photography pretty much. Uh, uh, if you feel like following me, on, um, that's my computer and our friend while we do. A quick disclaimer. Um, performing any hack attacks or deaths without written permission from the owner of the system is illegal. Uh, if you recently suffered a breach or something uh, and found a technique or tools illustrated in this presentation, this neither eliminates my involvement in any way. Tools and techniques are universal and that is that you must use this tool in the bank lines, right? Uh, presentation outline. So we will start with what is external point. Um, we'll look at uh, internal to set up how to attack a targeted organization. We'll perform a reconnaissance and look at some of the OSIN techniques. Um, we'll find out what are some, some common misconfigurations uh, when um, organizations are having an external animator and what all the controls they put in. Uh, once you gain, uh, once you break the uh, external animator and gain the internal football, you will stay calm and quiet inside the network, plant some backdoors here and there, um, and identify ground rules and exfiltrate as much as you can. And finally, some documentation as a key thing for us. Everyone here knows about Micro Framework. Mm, it's a model page for an adversary tactics and uh, techniques. So if you see it, it's part with initial access. Um, but it doesn't talk about how to get that initial access. That's why actually Micro has come up with something called three uh, attack. Um, it's a not so micro attack is an end to end attack chain for an attacker uh, to reach an organization. Uh, this is extremely important um, to both sides of cybersecurity. Uh, you team can learn um, how they can protect against, uh, how, how are the controls working against their defense mechanism and find loopholes. However, red teamers can look at uh, the attack methodology and target an organization. Um, some methodologies for external pen tests. But before we jump into it, let's learn what is external pen test. An external pen test is a test um, at, uh, which is an authorized hacking attempt against an organization internet facing infrastructure. This test, uh, this test is aimed at hardening the external facing network against a malicious uh, person or an attacker attempting to get inside the sensitive network. Um, as I said earlier, um, a micro attack uh, starts with initial access um, it, and it doesn't talk about the uh, real attack. So um, I think recently they have come up with a uh, new uh, crisis uh, which talks about pre attack. It's a set of 15 different categories used by an attacker to plan an attack. Um, so, more information you can figure it out on uh, our network marketer.org. Uh, they, they talk about a lot of stuff how to uh, perform an image of the functions, how to target an organization, how do you go ahead and perform software for it. Uh, the next one made is a OSIN framework. 
um, awesome framework is focused on gathering information from free tools or resources. Um, it, it's amazing uh, how we can gather information over the internet uh, and target an organization. There are so many things in this uh, topic, but uh, we've got very little short time. Uh, we can't cover everything, but I'll try as well uh, to cover as much as I can. There are other more other methodologies as well, like I saw F2P PA model or FP gaming model. Those are not quite popular amongst the infosec community. Um, however, um, this these methodologies are being used in uh, military uh, a lot actually to, to perform intelligence gathering, surveillance, smart acquisition, and then reconnaissance. Uh, but these are not widely used in infosec community. I think if there are some um, takeaways uh, from the um, uh, uh, this is that, um, that if, if in attendees they want to start their own pet project, they can start looking into this more as well. So, what crown jewels hackers are after? Uh, crown jewels are like the most sensitive and confidential data in uh, this might include things like um, data sets, such as uh, information on CRM database, uh, business critical documents, um, such as um, strategic plans or agreements, document or information that are subject to regulations, right? Um, intellectual properties, such as product designs and technical specification documents, uh, or personal information like IDs, passport, or driver's license. Hackers are really after all these things. They really want to have all this information so that you can they can either rent some a company or um, you know a perform an attack. Some more things on conference when you are um, targeting an organization. We need to consider uh, that protecting everything good is not an option in this increasingly digitized world. Um, give you a smaller example on this, right? For a hospital system, for example. Um, the most important uh, sensitive asset is typically patient information. Um, other data such as how to operate in an emergency room might be even publicly available, so we don't care about it. Uh, not all systems and data are created equally within your network. Um, in any given organization, some data and systems and qualifications are more critical than others. The classic example is in, in your organization, internet is available to everyone uh, in an organization. However, um, such critical CI database is only accessible to a DEA or something like that. Uh, depending on what level of access a particular person has, they are exposed to risk or some are likely to be targeted by attackers. Uh, generally, attackers have really good set, uh, knowledge of uh, where actually the crown threats are sitting once they are inside your network. Um, so, first, uh, what they think they should have a right to love to be one conference is monitoring system for implement suppression of duties where possible. All right, now we know what uh, conference are. Let's look at some interesting hack that has happened already this year. So, BSE email used to provide uh, email services uh, to uh, businesses in the US. Um, and someone actually came over the internet and uh, they have wiped out all the companies' um, primary and backup servers. This is insane when you think about someone can come in and wipe all your data out, including backup servers, right? So, um, uh, this, this company was running for 18 years, and uh, the, the founder was doing a live tweet um, about it, telling that um, you know, they can't recover. Um, this, this is an interesting attack uh, for me, as attackers have a whole and sole purpose was um, to destroy the company. I personally think there's some, someone out there who doesn't want the data to come out, right? And that's why they destructed everything. But this is an age case, right? Not really. So if, if this can happen to this organization, it can happen to any company on this planet. So you don't want such things to happen. Uh, this is an interesting hack, but uh, let's look at some time uh, On the right, again, I've got a table there which talks about um, how many companies are getting owned in, in, in recent year. Uh, and if you look at the organization type, there, is, there are government, financial sector, social, social network insights, financial companies, um, you name it, and it's there. So there are so many different types of organizations there. And if you see it closely, 
you can see that the, the number of records of uh, alcoholic is getting higher and higher. Um, uh, the last column in that table uh, is talking about uh, the methods and methods I'm using to get in. Uh, two of the interesting one is um, the first thing being um, just purely uh, an error sign to get in, that's hack. Uh, and the second one is uh, misconfiguration. Um, on my right, I bought this uh, interesting case study where uh, a Vipro was hacked uh, early in the April. Um, what attackers were trying to do is um, they were trying to get inside the Wipro network and then from there on they were targeting Wipro customers. So their end goal was not Wipro, their end goal was their customer. Um, this is really interesting because, um, you know, um, day by day, uh, the data analysis is going up and up and, um, you know, the attackers are becoming more and more sophisticated. So now we know the timeline. Let's go ahead and um, set up uh, an attack infrastructure for our own. So if you wanted to target an organization, how would you go ahead and set up an infrastructure? Um, usually, uh, an attacker would uh, go and hire a VPS server, uh, pay the big points. Um, but let's not read through. Uh, let's look at the visual representation of uh, of the whole setup. So. Uh, we have got our very own attacker here with Woody, of course. Um, uh, it is connected to a Wi Fi network uh, at Starbucks or in some mall, um, and it's running a live USB disk uh, to boot the machine. Um, the reason is we don't want to leave any traces on our machine, that's why it's good to have boot the machine to live USB disk. Um, all the traffic is going to either Tor network. Or maybe a VPN service. And lastly, we have got our attacking box. We are connecting to it to Tor network or VPN service. And, and towards the end, we have got the marketing infrastructure. Right? So, having um, setting up this service is really easy these days, uh, as we can pay by Bitcoin and be anonymized behind the VPN service. Um, you can actually set up Tor services on your party instance really easy. Um, it's, uh, there's something called proxy chains. Uh, it's a tool uh, which comes free uh, in store or in instance, which allows you to um, have all the PC connection go to uh, uh, all the PC connection, you can do any application on, on your machine, go to uh, PC sockets like uh, software proxy or software proxies. But this is a traditional way of attack, uh, right? Um, I mean, this, this is much is good uh, to of a one-time attack. Uh, if you really wanted to attack an organization, if you want to do some crazy stuff, like, you know, scan, scan um, a public facing site of an organization with an MFP file uh, flag or something. Um, it, it's, it's a noisy attack, it's a noisy attack, and your, uh, your current infrastructure here wouldn't survive. There are some drawbacks uh, of having a single VPN setup, um, there, there are high chances that uh, your team is going to get this setup, right? Um, there's a single point of failure. If the blacklist to our um, VPS uh, IP address, everything is gone. Um, all your efforts, everything is gone. You need to start from scratch. Uh, so, uh, the other thing is building a buffer viewers attack on our VPS server itself. Um, in the past, there have been many cases where um, Hackers still have bought um, uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities and then um, Empire had one uh, recently. Granam um, uh, is having a remote code execution vulnerability. Um, um, of, of, so so it's, uh, it's, there are high chances that uh, you can see the traffic coming to the CPS and then start attacking our, our, our VPS server itself. We don't want that, right? Uh, as a hacker, we, we want something more resilient. Uh, so then we can have long term servers sitting in the background and we can hide behind uh, relays and redirectors. So let's create a covert uh, setup. Uh, this is uh, so, 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 so I've got that uh, initial setup on the top right hand where I've uh, got a single DPS server, right? Um, everything remains the same, but we will exclude that DPS server and replace it with six or seven other servers, right? Um, it's a bit costly, of course, but it's really, really poor. Um, 
So on, on, on my right I've got uh, some long term servers with all the necessary tools installed. Alright? And uh, next is all the public relays or, or forwarders. Um, so I've got three servers in cloud paying bitcoins um, or some anonymous coins um, so that it doesn't get tied back to original hacker. Um, so, so all I can do is uh, um, the first server is doing port scan on, on a private organization. The second server is doing the boot ports for a phishing attempts, or the last one being the command and control server. Those ones are just the public relays. They are not doing anything. Basically, they are taking all the commands from uh, the long-term servers and for, and doing an um, attack on the private organization. So. Basically, all it's doing is it's a public relay uh, which, uh, to our uh, long term service. Uh, to do that, we have got awesome. This is what you need just two, three commands, simple commands to create that complex setup, right? So, what we will do is uh, we will start a reverse SSH tunnel uh, from your C2 server to your relay, which tells you. That redirect the sole purpose is to channel the internet traffic uh, to, to, to the long term servers. Um, uh, we can use something called socket, um, that's a multi a purpose relay. So, this, this is the command to set up the reverse SSH channel, and um, um, below is the command uh, for socket, which, uh, um, which actually binds the public relay to, to the long term server. Alright, All right. now we know the crown jewels and um, now our setup is up and running. We'll do some fossil software and enjoy for external pen test. Uh, for those guys uh, and girls over here who doesn't know what fossil software uh, is, fossil uh, is basically an open source uh, intelligence gathering. Um, software is basically social media intelligence uh, and joy. Uh, collecting information about uh, location to geospatial services. Uh, this is extremely useful when you are targeting uh, uh, an organization over the internet uh, for performing external campus. Right? Merely collecting data is not actually losing. Um, you have to consider that. But if you keep start an engagement, of, um, we will collect everything and, and then map the dot points to see. Uh, if, if the connected data is actually making any sense, that's when the intelligence comes in. So from here on, there are going to be too many tools and techniques for performing external pen tests. Um, the first one being uh, Lampire. Lampire is amazing because uh, those who like to use Windows operating system for their attacking methodologies, Lampire is great. Because you can see that you have got different methodologies to look at the same data, right? Either you can create a flow graph or so you, you can combine it with the geospatial techniques. There are so many options in there, and sometimes the information is overwhelming. Uh, the good thing is you can actually plug this one and uh, uh, it works without any cloud integration. What do I mean by that is uh, supposing you are working on an investigation where you are targeting an organization and collecting information. You can, you can do all those stuff offline. You can collect emails, phone numbers, URLs, IPs, company numbers, credentials, and whatnot like this. Uh, so this is Windows based tool, right? So for those who like Windows. The second one is Martin. Uh, this comes pre-installed on Kali and supports API communication uh, uh, with software like Shodan and Threatman. Uh, Shodan is tool where you go ahead and scan your whole internet and it gives you the result within seconds. Uh, the good thing about Martigo is uh, it gives you flow graphs and transformations. Um, uh, however, uh, the drop end expense is very pricey uh, when you think about it. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's an open source uh, intelligence gathering and they're asking for 999 results. Uh, the next one and the new one is uh, SpiderFood. Uh, SpiderFood uh, actually creates, um, it's a reconnaissance tool, uh, and it creates over 100 uh, public data sources. Um, so, this one is really good uh, because uh, you can uh, install a uh, Docker and then 
having uh, ha have the uh, Docker image running and then uh, go to your browser and point it to the IP where it is running. Um, you can have it uh, low, uh, and, and then you can access it over the browser, right? So it provides insights about data lake vulnerabilities and uh, sensitive information such as uh, if an organization is having an open data repository, where you, where you can go ahead and see all the sensitive information about an organization like API keys and AWS keys and things like that. Uh, the last good feature about this one is it generates a very detailed report um, and you can export it in the media format. Uh, this is the this is the last one and new one uh, in OSINT these days where um, uh, they, they use a distributed system uh, throughout the internet. Uh, they have got sensors and honey ports set up everywhere and they are listening for um, uh, various things like ports scan and it notifies an organization about uh, an open port, uh, an open port for services, uh, if the access certificate is going to expire um, in near time and things like that. This one is really good and it's making a record game involvement. They use something called honey ports and uh, I think they act as a census. If you would like to uh, do more research in it, you can go to that website and uh, check it out. Um, the next one, so this is, uh, we did all the automation based testing right, so far. Now let's go ahead and do some manual testing. So most of you guys over here use Telegram, right? Or WhatsApp. So there are search engines for Telegram and WhatsApp. There are so many search engines out there um, which can link uh, sensitive password balance or you know um, uh, you can perform a real time analytics on some public channels. Uh, my favorite one is Buzz.Island. Every time I'm on an engagement, I go there and uh, look for things like license keys and think uh, uh, you can get it for free. So if, if this license key belongs to your organization, you should be really worried, right? You should not have all this information uh, on the internet publicly available to anyone. That means at some stage, the attackers was in your network and utilizing uh, and making it publicly. Or maybe it's an inside job. You should go ahead and investigate it. Uh, the other one is a Google Custom Search uh, Engine uh, for Telegram. Um, I was just curious and I looked for password dumps and for sure it was there. Um, and then I had a company name and a VPN password as a search query. And I, I found a couple of VPN credentials in there. Uh, the last one is my favorite one because you can actually go ahead and get the whole MPBS or big file of some of the organization uh, to this methodologies and you know. Uh, you know what happens when you get the red file out. Uh, first thing you go ahead and see if you can get the KRPT GT account, right? Uh, so that's some Telegram pleasures out there. There are such things for WhatsApp as well, but I'm not going to include that. Uh, the next one is look for open SP buckets. Oh. There are in past, there are so many companies. Uh, have been owned just by having an open SP buckets uh, um, exposed to the internet. This is the easiest way to attack any given organization. Um, you, uh, there are so many different projects, uh, and um, if you just look for open SP buckets, and they have uh, there are at least 500 different projects on, on this topic, right? The, uh, the good one is F3 Dix. It keeps a track of data which is, that has happened by SP buckets. So if you want to learn more about it, how people are just, you know, going and looking for an open SP bucket which is well readable um, and, you know, performing a bridge. I don't even call it a hacking, it's just a dumb thing to have, right? So there are other tools like SP Inspector and SP Scanner, uh, which are uh, based on brute force techniques. Um, but uh, uh, they have got some drawbacks, like they show you only the first thousand results. And sometimes the output is not that interesting. My favorite one is a um, gray hat warfare. Uh, this is interesting because uh, all you need to do is uh, just go to the site and uh, they put a large database out there, or they have given all the data base, um, and so that it doesn't show you the uninteresting, uh, not interesting stuff. Um, so if you put an um, organization name, you'll start soon seeing, start seeing the results out. It is going to speak things like AWS keys. Um, API keys, VPN credential, and whatnot. So you don't need to do anything. 
Um, it's just the organization is, is, doesn't have security knowledge and um, you know putting things on the internet. All right, so we did some uh, manual uh, uh, manual techniques, uh, also in uh, automation tools, but so far we haven't talked about uh, what all things are, are, are out there for a given target and organization, right? So for that, uh, there's a technique called subdomain enumeration. There are so many techniques uh, for performing the subdomain enumeration. Some of them are like group forcing uh, or looking at the SSL certificate. Um, uh, doing ASM discovery or you know, looking at the zone transfers and things like that. Uh, but here are some of my favorite uh, ones. Um, this is uh, really you just go to this site and uh, punch in the domain information and it's going to give you the results of all the subdomains owned by that particular organization. This is really interesting. One. So this is based, uh, this is two browsers, right? So. People in the infosec community, they have come up with so many tools and they have combined various techniques uh, and have written tools uh, like subgroup, NF, uh, Recon NG, DNS Recon, Fields, Global Spread, oh, there are so many. This, this, and this list can go, uh, this is endless, right? I mean, I can, I can talk about subdomain integration for two days to make one finish. So, Subdomain enumeration will give you more knowledge about all the subdomains uh, currently owned by an organization. So, so far we have done about uh, some credentials, uh, maybe uh, automation uh, based, um, uh, uh, automation based uh, information gathering, we know the subdomains, what next, right? Now we have got the um, Subdomains, of course, those subdomains are going to have a login uh, pages, right? But what we don't know is who all uh, are working in a particular organization. We have no idea about it. So let's do some information gathering on uh, people who are actually working in this organization. Right? Um, there is uh, something simple like this, like uh, it's, uh, it's a Google docking, where you just go ahead, uh, you punch in the site information. And you search for that query organization chart uh, dot CC, and you will see a lot of results out there, um, which which is going to tell you the, all the AD directory structure. So with this information, you know exactly who, what's the user impact in for an organization, how many users are there, what's the organization unit looks like, what's the forest, how many users are going to be in there, things things like that. All this information are publicly available. So if, it, if your organization is expos exposing your debt directly to the internet, um, it's there. So someone doesn't need to put much effort. It's just out there and an attacking thing utilizing. The, the second service is Rocket Bridge. This is fairly really new one um, compared to other, other services. Um, it gives you information about the uh, complete profile, what's their um, web branch is. How much, how much traffic the organization is uh, having in a given point of time, um, what's their revenue. So you know, you think the revenue will give you a rough idea about, uh, you can actually estimate there are algorithms out there looking at this, uh, depending on the organization revenue, how much good there is uh, spending on security. Um, they have got their, um, um, uh, all the employees, what's the email format and things like that. This is a really cool one. Um, the next one is hunter.io. Um, if you're targeting OWA portals or um, Office 365 login portals, right, you need to know someone's um, email address. An email address, depending on an organization, it may vary, right? Some, some companies use this first name or last name at organization.com or um, just the first character from the first name and then the last name. So it may vary from organization to organization. But what Hunter and uh, Hunter.io would allow you to do is, it's going to go ahead and search for all the email addresses it, it can see online. And it's going, to be, it, it's going to spit out the information about the exact format the organization is using, so that you can build your own dictionary. So supposedly an organization is using first.lastname first at, at, at organization.com, you can build your own dictionary as an attacker, right? 
amongst the following, my favorite one is LinkedIn username. Here is the GitHub uh, link. You can download it. It's pretty smooth and simple. Uh, what it does it, is it goes to a uh, company page or, or on a LinkedIn site, and then from there on, it, it looks for uh, who are I working there. Once it knows about it, it starts creating a dictionary um, uh, in different format, as I said. Um, so those the ones in the red, they even create a dictionary in those different formats. Right? Uh, as an attacker, this is extremely useful. Right? When you are going to perform some active uh, sorry, active scans. All this is passive as of now, right? Um, uh, and below is the actually the one in the orange airport is the um uh basically a, it's the command how do I how do I go ahead and use it? Some companies actually um uh, are really smart and they, they, they go ahead and uh, obfuscate the usernames. But um, uh, the, there are tools like uh, Foca, which you can go ahead and uh, perform active uh, scannings. You can dump all the uh, documents and then look for things like usernames in the document properties. Uh, that's a GoLang based uh, tool as well called Doka. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you have time, you should do these things as well. The next one is, uh, let's do some geo, 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 geo special based person um, uh, to posting uh, like Instagram. Um, this, this, what this is going to do is it's going to create a relationship between uh, the different users and it's going to, uh, so some of the tools are API less, so you won't even need to be authenticated. The next one is SnapMap, which is really amazing. Uh, you won't need to be an authenticated and uh, look at all the um, uh, uh, snap stories the user are publishing. Uh, it's, a, it's an unauthenticated view and um, it gives you a nice looking hit map as well of where the most uh, activity is happening. You can actually go ahead and create a legitimate longitude. So if you are targeting an organization, if you know their address, you can provide the uh, address of that wedding and, and it's going to speak, uh, tell you the stories from that wedding itself. This is really interesting. Uh, Echoes is, is the other one where you can actually set up a radius um, and uh, perform an object identification as well. Uh, uh, here you can put uh, things like um, give me uh, all the pictures uh, from social media where uh, someone has posted a uh, picture of them. Um, and it's going to give you that and, uh, and it's going to alert you. The next one is social bar. Oh, this has just released, uh, this one released last week. Um, it, it creates a nice looking uh, workflows and uh, identifies different uh, uh, relationships between different uh, social media accounts. Uh, it coordinates the data and, uh, and because it's using uh, UTJS, uh, it uses Django as a backend. There are other techniques like uh, clustering search engines. Clustering search engines are amazing. Um, unlike traditional search engines, it gives you the exact results about the particular um, uh, such query and, uh, and it will give you what other people are looking at uh, and what other people are searching for the similar stuff. Um, there are so many such uh, clustering search engines out there. Uh, my favorite one is Telegram, where you can have information that they very uh, draws a nice looking visualization. You can uh, pick and choose what you are looking for. So that things like enterprise software, what software uh, an organization is using it internally. Uh, whether they have got a GitHub account uh, which is open and available by everyone, things like that. Uh, the next one is screenshotting. This is amazing, right? So imagine you, you are looking for so many things, right? And, uh, and, a, and in an organization, you can have thousands and thousands of soft domains. You can't go ahead. Um, so a particular engagement is usually of four or five days or eight days, right? You can't browse those documents manually. That would be insane. I mean, uh, what this tool will allow you to do is it's going to take a screenshot of all the publicly facing websites. It's going to tell you whether the, those, uh, those uh, websites have open uh, login pages. It's going to actually go ahead and try the default credentials as well for those kind of websites. And uh, in the meantime, bam, without anything, you have got um, access to. Oh, I didn't 
guys. All right, from here on, that's it. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> all right, so that was that. All right, keep talking, yeah. Uh, so my favorite one is uh, I recommend. It's going to go ahead and take a screenshot of all the community facing. Uh, so some of you may have had like, a thousand portraits, right? It's going to take a screenshot. And it's going to create an HTML report. So all you are doing is just looking at the report and figuring out whether that's an interesting portrait exposed to the internet. And if you know some vulnerability, some of you believe that the top tech portal exposed to the internet, you want to look at it, right? You don't want to necessarily create a default credentials on the top tech uh, and get a shell on the box. Um, next one. So, until this, until then, we were taking a screenshot, we will utilize the setup which I showed, right? Um, and we are going, until that point, it was all passive because we were utilizing all the tools. From here on, it's going to be active scan. So what do I mean by active scan is we, uh, from our infrastructure, we are going to send the packets to the actual organization who is the target for us, right? So MM is the best one and it's the most early used tool. Um, which uh, there are so many flags in NMAP, I think I can just talk about NMAP for one week and it couldn't finish. Um, the best thing in NMAP is um, they bought something called NSE scripts. Uh, make sure before you run this command, you update the scripts as well, so that you get the latest and greatest thing from it. Um, finally, on the NMAP, um, uh, I'll show you the quick thing uh, that what you can do with NMAP as well. Here I'm looking for all the subdomains for Microsoft.com uh, using NMAP. So I'm utilizing DNS group script, uh, which is available in NMAP. Uh, to figure out all the um, all the uh, subdomains for Microsoft.com. So this is going to be active, but all uh, the, the other subdomain information techniques which I showed earlier, those were all those were all passive. So yeah, you have to be super considerate about it when you are doing active scans. Mass scan. This is amazing. The, the reason is uh, it, they scan the whole internet. Um, so if you are part looking for port three three eight nine. Which one is port 5889? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? RDP, yeah, great, thanks, sir. So, uh, if you are scanning the whole internet for port 5889 to uh, get a share on the box to mute it, right? Uh, mask and yeah. scan the whole internet in three minutes time. Because it, it, uh, it's, um, it's amazing to, so I got this uh, screenshot from Jason Haddix, uh, one of the network of the where he's looking for some interesting ports and give the results as soon as possible. So as an attacker, you need to be um, utilizing multiple tools uh, because every tool has got trade-offs, right? Um, uh, those trade-offs are whether you wanted to do things quickly or as quickly as possible. Um, once we know the open ports and services, next thing is we need to exactly know what a target organization is using as an operating system. So that there are multiple tools. Uh, the, uh, my favorite one is export and POF. Uh, export will uh, here I'm giving you the syntax of how to use Expro, um, and it will give you the guess probability that this uh, host is utilizing uh, Linux kernel 2.6.1. And there are so many different installations where it gives you that version, right? So without entering the internal network, you, you already identify all this information about the target. The second one is POF. Um, so uh, this is sort of a man attack attack where uh, you start logging and as soon as the target creates some uh, traffic, here I'm creating some traffic uh, on my Windows machine and it, it tells me it's either Windows 7 or 8. The next one is directory emulation. There are so many great tools out there for doing directory emulation. People is, uh, is the best tool amongst all as it's really fast and it has got uh, its uh, ups and downs as well other tools, right? So, and you won't believe it that there have been many part hunters uh, have um, utilized directory enumeration um, and have been awarded just to find dot uh directly on, on a target and then they got paid $2,000 or $5,000 for this, right? So well, automation is the key. I mean, um, when you are targeting things, you want things to be as fast as possible. 
So at Traffic Intelligence, we have come up with our own platform for Evolve. Um, uh, we do all the ad hoc automation on our own. Uh, it's a completely passive solution. Um, it will tell you, it will do the direct enumeration. It will tell you uh, what the threat profiles of your employees are. It will, it will map, it will do some geo based based things as well. Uh, it will go and search for dark web and whatnot. So this is great. Uh, password links. Yes, stolen usernames and password links uh, on the internet are the leading way of this thing or a pop, right, these days. Sites getting over every now and then. Just earlier this year, there was a data breach of 1.4 billion passwords. Can you believe it? 1.4 billion passwords are out there, right? And this is great for an attacker for doing some posting, right? So there, there are some great services like uh, Lexify and Havana. Most of those, uh, most of you guys might be aware of this. Because attacker can send all this information on dark web and other sites for a really cheap price. If you uh, for 1.4 billion uh, passwords, you know the price for it on the dark web? It's around 200 dollars. That's so cheap, right? I mean, you can go ahead and you can perform so much of the privileges gathering with it. Um, over the past year, the size of password dump is getting bigger and bigger. And once you start actually looking for offline password manager, because um, you know, even though online password uh, managers have um, vulnerabilities quite often, just last few weeks, I guess uh, there was a vulnerability in last class. Yeah, so I think the best one is uh, often password manager. Uh, at uh, Tech Intelligence, uh, we have got not just 1.4 million password, we can be about 7 or 700 million compromised accounts. And we have been collecting data breaches for past um, one weekend, right? Like for all past weekend, right? Um, and then there are some services through which uh, if, it, um, it can, if, you, if you opt for the service, it, it will notify if your email address or account gets compromised uh, in any of these breaches. Um, if, if you are interested in looking at how it works, you can actually click on the YouTube link and uh, look for more stuff. The last one is administrative borders. Uh, okay. There are so many administrative borders exposed to the internet. My favorite one is WordPress. Right? WordPress has got so many vulnerabilities. Um, we can do username enumeration and whatnot with this. The other one is Sitecore. You know the default connection for Sitecore? The password is B. That's the password for Sitecore. Username is admin and the password is B. That's it, character B. Um, it's not even hacking. You go there, you'll be surprised that so many portals are exposed with um, uh, default credentials. Um, yeah, and so some of the main sites exposing admins, providing links to their admin portals, um, PHP My Admin, Jenkins. Um, some customized uh, portals as well. Um, so all of these tend to have vulnerabilities, right? All right, we have spent so much time performing things on a target. So what do we know about the target so far? We know the office and organization culture through uh, uh, through Instagram or Snapchat and whatnot. Uh, potential employees, these are uh, by through LinkedIn. Uh, we know the admin VPN portal to, to subdomain integration, uh, username patterns to foci and to IO, uh, and brief our idea about password policies. Let's send that intel and perform something called password spraying. What password spraying is, uh, you find one password across all the users in the dictionary um, uh, and, and see if you are getting lucky and uh, getting an access to. Office 365 or something. Uh, try one password of all users. You need to be really careful because there could be account local policies, right? There are tools like Nails, Sniper, and Automizer. These are great tools. Um, Automizer is really robust in nature. However, Nails, Sniper sometimes don't give you the robust output. So, yeah, I mean, every tool has got its ups and downs, right? Um, so, supposedly, to passwords, you want to your first account. What next? Once you get the first account, that's it. Um, there is something called GAP. 
which is global address list. Uh, you can get it from Office 365. Uh, that, that's a up-to-date list of all the users in, in the um, current domain. All right. So um, what I've seen on my engagement, using all this technique, I'm getting into the network at least eight times out of ten, just to open source and uh, gathering. So most of the common misconceptions what I've come across is lack of effect of authentication, right? If, if, if you don't have a lot of effect to effect on your OWA or um, uh, even accounts or VPN gateways, then you should assume that your company is already owned. Uh, administrative portals exposed to the internet, big parts of policies, default credential, the last one being the uh, VPN that's written. Uh, what that means is uh, exposing SMB and uh, RDP ports uh, or, or to the internet. So, assuming you have got your first user, now let's uh, and creating the setup on the machine, and you have already authenticated them to the uh, to the VPN network. Uh, now what, what what next? Let's give it to the internal network over the internet. There is a term for living on the land. This is getting famous nowadays because uh, um, what this means is uh, making use of already installed application and tools on the compromise source. So once you have a VPN access to any organization, you can join, domain join uh, uh, the machine and start enumerating uh, performing the reconnaissance internally. Right? All we were doing so far was reconnaissance over the internet for an external time matter. Now we are inside the network. Let's do some research uh, report using living of the land. We don't want to uh, um, alert the beauty of uh, that there are tools installed uh, on a compromised host, right? Uh, if, you, if, you, if, if you alert the beauty, that's it. Your, your connection is gone, the password is changed, and all your efforts is gone. There's a project called LOLBANS. Um, uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right. Um, but uh, it's a curated list of all the living of the land findings and scripts, which is amazing. Um, so, to, to start the reconnaissance, right? Windows has got an uh, amazing set of utilities in, in there, like system info. Uh, that's a command, right? Uh, system info will tell you what's the current uh, patch level of that machine. You can get that information. You can uh, use a task list to print out all the current processes in the um, uh, uh, running in that uh, host, compromise host. Uh, R.A. hyphen A will tell you all the other users connected to the machine. Oh, there are so many commands in Windows. So, so, so what is a takeaway from this screen is normal domain user doesn't need to have a command from or a PowerShell or EXE open to them. It's useless. Most of the domain users are not using it. Right? So why is it even allowed? Once you do some reconnaissance and have got a football in the internal network, uh, it's time to perform some lateral movement. Uh, lateral movement is basically going from one machine to the other within, uh, within uh, a network and performing, uh, basically getting an access to the internal network. So when you are doing an internal practice, your end goal is to get uh, administrative privileges on some of the boxes so that you can access crown roots. There are various techniques to perform lateral movement. In the past two, three years, uh, the, there have been great changes in the industry and, and uh, there is an automation, a lot of automation in uh, has been placed for doing the lateral movement. Uh, my favorite one is Gladam or Shaphong nowadays. Uh, it's a graph based uh, utility where uh, it will give you the paths to domain admin, right? So it will tell you exactly which machine you need to pop in the network so that uh, you can get it, become a domain admin. It's amazing, right? It's really fast and it's sufficient. Um, here are some of the methods you need to uh, use to start the program on, a, on an attacking box. Um, it's a browser based application. Okay, the next one is, is uh, Dead Star. Dead Star, what, what it will do is uh, it's a Python script, but it will um, get connected to Empire SQL channel over the RESTful APIs. What it will do is 
uh, it's an automation, right? So it will go ahead and pop all the boxes for you and it will give you the domain again. You don't even need to do anything. You are having a coffee on your desk and by the time um, you are domain admin. That's awesome, right? That smell is amazing. It uses PowerShell as well as uh, Python. Right? Um, this is amazing tool. I use it on a bunch of engagements uh, to get a domain admin and it works like a charm. Uh, the next one is GoFetch. This uh, one works uh, with Grana. It goes well with Grana actually. Um, so for those who actually want to use it in Empire season, uh, they can actually go and use Elsa, but this one works with Grana. Um, uh, it works in two different versions. Uh, the first one being chain reaction, and the other one is what computer to do them more. What's the basic difference between them as uh, Chain reaction will pop all the ground uh, parts uh, on its own. However, the one computer to do them all will have a central server uh, and then get it propped up or, and access what you can see from the server and give you the payments passwords so that you can perform a lateral movement. Uh, the last one is handy copy. This is good uh, if you have a cobalt strike as a C2 server. It goes well with cobalt strike. Um, uh, what it does is it takes the part again from the ground and uh, it gets integrated well with the box strike. Uh, there's a really good proof of concept video uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can look at it. Okay. So, once you become a domain admin, what's the next thing? Um, NTLM hashes, right? That's what the attackers are after NTLM hashes. Um, there are really cool tools out there, uh, crack map exec uh, and secret them. But if you don't want to install anything, uh, uh, and these are all remotely, uh, re remotely attacking tools, right? But if, uh, by default, Windows have a lockdown on the entities or big file. So you can't go ahead and access it. But there are things uh, like uh, VSS admin, uh, and think, uh, which will allow you to create a shadow copy of the entities or big file. Um, uh, which holds all the NPL hashes of all the users in, you know, uh, in, in the network. Right? So with this, you can get the um, access to KRBPGP account. What that account is, is uh, that will allow you to perform things like a uh, thing uh, attack. Uh, so that even if uh, they are rotating the password, you are still trying to get in with the KRBPGP. Um, now we've got all these things. We have already become a domain admin. The last thing is exfiltration. Uh, Windows by itself has got, um, you can install this uh, um, uh, utility or Windows operating environment systems, uh, which are signed uh, application, uh, which might not be get flagged by your NPI tools or EDR systems. Um, so, uh, or it's the last one is really interesting one in this list is. Uh, using a highly trusted domain like Gmail or GitHub or Twitter, uh, use it as like a command and control server and perform an exploration to it. Uh, after making so much of effort of exploiting data, you don't want to lose the connection. Uh, you want to have some sort of a persistent mechanism, right? And for that, you don't need to install anything special uh, on the machine or the compromised source or a compromised domain controller. Or um, uh, you can utilize the, some of the Windows uh, input tools uh, like custom units for processing mechanism. Uh, uh, for those who like to use uh, Metasploit, uh, there is a really good uh, flag, uh, there, there is a really good mechanism for red persistence uh, in the Metasploit uh, where you can uh, have a persistence to registry trace. All right, but you must be wondering. Like after doing all these noisy attacks, um, wouldn't your AD would pick this up or an AD ask this? All all the good days, um, never is getting evolving every now and then. Right? Like uh, they, they are having AD solutions. All the network nowadays have AD solutions, but there are bypasses to AD solutions too. Um, first thing you need to know is whether your AD um, solution have any temper protection. Can, some jumps, can someone just go ahead and disable the EDR? Yeah. What are the permissions? In Windows, there is a, there is a uh, good command for a take on, 
which uh, takes the ownership of the given directory or an uh, uh, or a file structure. Uh, through that, you can get an admin rights to yourself and change the permissions. Um, some media solutions just by modifying or deleting the um, by, by deleting the media solutions um, would not talk to their agent and uh, actually it won't talk to connection server. Um, there is a really good talk uh, on how to bypass next gen media solutions uh, at Derbycon this year. Um, that's the link where you can go ahead and see how, uh, how, how they were able to bypass all the media. Right, from the demolition point of view, um, for your external pen, uh, pen meter, you should always have multi factor authentication, no matter what portal it is. Whether it's Office 365, OWA, or your uh, VPN, or MDM solutions. You should and must have two factor authentication, doesn't matter what happens. Do not share C files to your tokens to the user. I've got a good story here, actually. Um, hopefully, I can uh, talk, talk about it. Um, uh, um, so, I was on an engagement, and this organization was using two factor authentication on all the portals VPN, um, email, email, OWA, and you ask for it, and um, they are too happy on it. And my manager was telling me that, oh, no, you can't get in. Um, but there was one single server. Because which was email archiving server. Um, that was not too effective. So I did a password screen attack on it. I got one user, and, and I'm going through this email, emails one after the other, right? And suddenly I saw C files uh, in the email archiving server. What next? Uh, I mean, I.